Okay, it's time. Fremene? I love you. De La Roche. Oh my god, look at this. Hey, Hoyavers, this is great, dude. I really like when we can press F to start a, 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 a quest or event. I, this is a great thing. This should be for every quest. All of them. Uh, fucking hell. Hmm, that can't be right. Can be. It is right. But what if they're real after all? What? No, that can't be. Dementors? Mm, but what if there's a chance? What? Greetings, miss. Is there something that's bothering you? You okay? Oh, no, it's nothing. I'm Della Roche, the representative of the Fontaine Fishing Association. How can I help you? Received a commission request. Oh, so you're adventurers. Oh, finally. Someone has heard my prayers. I took three arrows Pardon to each knee. How you were really bothered by something. Don't worry, you've got two super experienced adventurers right here. We'll take care of anything and everything oh. for you as long as you pay us a little bit of more. Out. It is Sadine's VA. Oh, you are exactly the helpers I need. See, the problem is that the fish around a fishing spot at Arrhenius oh. have just all up and vanished recently. You could never be Sadine, though. She's just better. Sorry. They disappeared too quickly for it to have been the work of human anglers. As the representative of the fishing association, I had planned to go and investigate the area right away. But? <clears throat> right. But unfortunately, as the representative of the fishing association, there are a few other errands that I absolutely have to run. So, like? So you'd like us to investigate the spot for you? Hmm. Exactly. You're right, Anamora. So I thought I could delegate this work to you. Are you two some kind of prophets, knowing exactly what I was going to say like that? Or maybe like the oracles you read about in fairy tales? <laughs> no, we already told you we're adventurers. Yeah, we're just really experienced in this kind of thing, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll get a good night's sleep knowing the two of you are on the case. It really doesn't sound too difficult. No, you mustn't let your guard down. Mm. As the representative of the fishing association, I have good reason to believe that the fish have gone missing due to an encounter with the water imps. Water imps? Yes, you're both outlanders, right? Yes. Our local fairy tales often speak of a terrifying underwater creature called Thelxy. The story our parents would tell us was always the same. If we went to the water alone, then we'd be snatched away and eaten by a water imp called Thuxy. What? A child eating water imp? Did they tell you what it looked like? My father would always describe it as a beautiful, multicolored snake woman, while my mother said it had a handsome face. It's really strange, though, because you'd also hear other people describe it as just a chubby penguin with a deceptive appearance. <laughs> Even though the tales vary regarding its appearance, everyone agrees that it's really dangerous. It lives in an underwater cave surrounded by pallid bones and uses its sensitive nose to track down lonely children who've lost their way. Oh. And once it finds a child, it uses its alluring singing voice. Yeah, like a siren. I was going to say like a siren. Following them all. Pretty terrifying, isn't it? We got sirens uh, in Genshin. Sounds kind of scary. But isn't that pretty normal for a fairy tale? After all, those kinds of stories are usually made up to help keep children away from danger. True. But what if the fairy tale was inspired by a real-life tale? Just like how a water vein always has a source. Do you have any concrete evidence? Well, I wouldn't call it evidence per se, but I've heard some rumors lately. They say that someone recently saw a child walk into the water as if he was possessed by something... Doesn't that sound just like he was responding to the call of a water imp? Or sleepwalking. So you mean someone really got eaten by a water imp? It's all hearsay, so it's hard to confirm. But still, they all say this happened on Irenaeus. That's no laughing matter if you ask me. Hmm. Both the Opera House and the Fountain of Lucene were built there, and the sources of many water veins can be traced to the island as well. Combine that with the mysterious mist, the huge tree with expansive underground roots, and the rumor that the fish ships on the island can understand human language. Uh? Is it really so shocking that an island so shrouded in mystery could harbor a terrifying water imp as well? No. Uh, why does Paimon feel like you're pulling our leg? <laughs> just piling on the rumors now. 
The fish upset us at a human yeah, language. If someone's really been hurt, then we can't just ignore the situation, right, Traveler? We'll go check it out. Oh, marvelous. Then I'll just mark the stretch of water on your map. Don't forget that no matter what, safety always comes first. Don't you think with the amount of people marking random shit on our map at this point that uh, it would be, like, marked everywhere? <laughs> How do the marks just disappear? What's our map made of, dude? Uh, I'm on EU server. Water Imp's Conjecture. The footprints extend all the way into the water. This look pretty fresh. <gasps> Did the water imp get someone again? Let's look around and see if we can find anything else. Okay. Oh, God. You're excited for green chess? Yeah, furniture, dude. <gasps> Wait. Did you hear something just now? No. Gurgling noises can be heard coming from the water. Uh-oh. The noises grow louder and louder until something emerges with a loud splash. <gasps> it's a child! Oh, it's... <laughs> Paimon? Traveler? I mean, I'm not wrong! Faraday! Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot I was still wearing this. <laughs> ah! A child! <laughs> Faraday! Hi. <laughs> Paimon, are you okay? No, we just saw a ghost. <laughs> Paimon nearly mistook you for a water imp! Thank goodness it was just you wearing your helmet! <laughs> huh? A water imp? We're investigating a water imp called Thelxy. Thelxy, you say? How surprising. Huh? You know that name too? Or do you know someone else is trying to investigate the water imp? No. I think our situations are probably unrelated. Uh, what's going on with you? Sure, if that's in order. I know <laughs> the name because of one of my employers. She noticed the clockwork penguins I brought to the workshop and contacted me through the shop's owner. She has commissioned me to make a special toy. Mm. Following her request, I've named the toy Thelxy. Oh. Huh? But isn't it a little creepy to name a toy after a water imp? Uh, wait, hold on! Fermina, you never take commissions from other people! I'm confused here. Yeah, but, uh... She made a special request. But out of respect for her privacy, I can't really talk about it. Mm. It's all right, though. She'll be coming over to check on my progress shortly. And I'll just tell her that you're two of my trustworthy companions. Hearing that, she might be willing to share some information. And you'll be able to continue with your investigation. Okay. Yeah. Even though you seem a little cold and reserved sometimes, you're still really considerate. True. Our target isn't necessarily the water imp, though. We're primarily here to investigate the disappearance of the fish. The fish? Yeah, the fish. Fermenet nods slightly and seems lost in thought after you tell him about the commission for the Fish Association. Suddenly, his breath catches in his throat. Ah, <gasps> uh, I think I may have connected the dots. These past few weeks, I've been taking Thelxy for underwater testing every day. Oh, God. The pressure testing makes a lot of noise. It's for So, all that about the disappearing fish? Well, it was probably because of me. God fucking damn it. <laughs> so that's all it was? That actually makes a lot of sense. Wait, so could that mean the child we heard about who walked into the water was also... Just Fremity preparing for another day of work. Oh my god, he is the child. Yes, I think that's quite likely as well. <laughs> so in the end, it was just Fremity. Pyron spent all this time imagining what a water imp from the fairy tales might look like, and it all turns out to be just a hoax. I'm sorry. It sounds like I've created a lot of trouble for everyone else as well. Oh. Uh. I'll try to finish this commission as soon as possible. <laughs> Once I'm done, the fish should come back. Uh, don't worry about it. It was a misunderstanding. Anything we can do? Uh, thanks for offering. But I can't trouble you any more than I already have. You can and you will. Hey, you know it. Can you just call us your trustworthy companions? Companions are all about helping each other, you know? But... Don't you need to report back to your commissioner? Mm. Nope, that's not how it works. See, Paimon's got this 
Commissioner types all figured out, even though we were just tasked with finding out why the fish had gone missing. If we tell them now that it was all just a misunderstanding, you can bet they'd just immediately hand us another commission to help them get the fish back. True. Uh, we're just really experienced at this kind of thing, that's all. Exactly! So if we can help you finish up your work and get the fish back, that would save us an extra trip! Um... So I'm sitting there. Is that what Barbecue you'd like to do titties. as well? I think Paimon's right. Huh. All right. I'll trust your judgment. Please follow me. I've made a makeshift camp over there. Okay, sick. We don't know. Oh, well. Oh. He can respond to some simple verbal commands. You can try calling his name and see if he'll come over. Hi, are you doing character yeah, reviews? Does it look like I am? I am not, hey, no. Doxy, are you there? Cute. Wait, I'm stealing. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Okay, I don't need to read the Thelxy development yet. I would need to talk to Thelxy. Oh, my God. It speaks in Morse code. What does that say? So that's from an Ace version of Thelxy. It's also penguin shaped, just like Pear. Yep. Had Thelxy lived in Penguin Town, he'd probably have become great friends with Pear. Mmm, where's Penguin Town? Uh, it's not really anywhere famous or important. Wait, it's an actual thing? Don't worry about it. It's a place? Hey, Thelxy. Nice to meet you. Do you know how to say hello? That did sound like hello. Hello. So can Thelxy talk? I wanted to install a language output module. But due to time constraints, I had to give up on the idea. As it stands, Thelxy can only output messages that were pre-written into its motherboard. I haven't given him the ability to convert those messages into discernible words, so he can't really talk to us just yet. Hmm. Uh, no need to get so technical. So basically, you want us to help you complete and install this language module, right? Uh, no, <laughs> there's no need. Aww. That wasn't one of my employer's requests. That's cute. It was just something I wanted to try. I have two other things I'd like your help with. The first is to do some integration testing on Thelxy's motherboard to make sure he will be able to function properly in most situations. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound too hard. And what's the other thing? The other shouldn't so take too long there. either. Barbecue sauce You'll on my need kitchen. to find Thelxy some Hello. colorful shells it's good and to be coral, back to watching so I can after craft a weapon a for him. Uh, Diff, thank you for the eight months. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome a back. Weapon? Will Thelxy have to fight? Hell yeah, Penguin Warfare. Mm -hmm. Thelxy will need to be able to charge forward with a weapon in hand. Like that brave Prince of Legend. It's a part of my employer's request. What an imaginative employer! Naming Thelxy after a water imp, but wanting him to look like a prince? Mm -hmm. Well, regardless of his role or species, Thelxy's purpose is the same. Just like Pear, he has come to this world to serve as somebody's companion. Hmm. What does that mean? Whoa! Thelxy just said something again! Could he understand what we were just talking about? Probably. He can react to certain key words, but unfortunately, due to the lack of a translation module, he still can't quite communicate with us. That's a pity. But anyway, the most important thing right now is for us to get to work. Maybe let's start by doing some testing on the motherboard. That sounds like something we mm. can do here in the camp. Sounds good. The motherboard is on my workbench. I so see it. Please follow me. Puzzle time, hopefully. Puzzles would be cool. Puzzles would be cool. Ah, here we go. I have this testing manual, so feel free to reference it if you get stuck. I won't. Want I'm a gamer. To give it a try? Yep. It's okay if you don't succeed immediately. I've got a lot of backup boards just in case. I'll give okay. it a try. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, I'm so smart. That's it? That was fucking dog shit. Give me a hard one, Fremmy. 
What the hell? <sighs> You're so doing well. There, Just as I expected. Thelts with a little hat. I know. Thelts is cute. Thelts is cute. Before, you know. Then let's move on to the underwater part. It's just as I mentioned earlier. We're after colorful shells and coral. Okay. Oh, speaking of which, you're both already pretty used to Fontaine's underwater environment, right? Pretty much experts now. Okay, that's good. Just let me know mm. if you ever feel uncomfortable. I'll make sure to stay right by your side. Oh. That's cute. But no, I will never be uncomfortable under the water. I am a fish in the fucking sea. A fish in the vast ocean. Plenty to explore, nothing to overcome. Just a fish swimming aimlessly, breathing, bl blubbing, diving. I'm an otter. Oh, conch. To find something that'll help us. This is it. We call this thing an echoing conch. Yeah, I've seen it, it before. It can detect special reflection waves in the water. To Sorry for Did you notice any interesting places? The echoing conch should have detected some just now. Yeah. Let's go check them out. I found a fucking bubble. Whoa, 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 whoa. Another one. Oh god. All hell the magic conch. Oh. What? All right. These should be oh. enough. Let's head back to camp. That's it. Thank you for staying out here with me all this time. You're welcome. I'm gonna get fucking shot by a cannon. Wait, who are you? Zuria Des. She's. Ah, uh, Fremine, you're back. <laughs> I thought you might have been out diving. I'm sorry, Madame Destray. I must have kept you waiting. I can report, though, that the construction of Thelxi is going quite smoothly. Well, I don't know why, but as soon as he said Madame Destray, I thought of Bellatrix Lestrange. There's no rush. <laughs> I'm your in. employer, not your supervisor. True. And these two are... Supervisors. <laughs> oh, uh, they're two of my trustworthy companions. <laughs> they're here to help me work on Thelxi. Yes, I see. I suppose it's only natural for someone responsible like you to have some reliable friends. It's really nice to meet you, Madame Destre. Are you Fremenay's employer? Paimon mm. is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. Greetings, my new friends. Just call me Zuria. Well, we're not friends You're yet. Both so adorable. The sight of you reminds me of little fairies under a cottage roof. What? The, that's the weirdest compliment I've ever had, other than that one YouTube comment that said I used to look oh, round and now I'm flat. Really think so? Do I look like a fairy too? Of course. If my child had friends like you, then perhaps he wouldn't have become so obsessed with the tales of water imps. And I wouldn't have had to trouble Fremine here with this commission. Obsessed with the tales of water imps? Ah, oh, so you don't know anything about my request yet? I would have thought Fremine had explained it to you already. No. Nope. Well, Fremine told us that it was a private matter, so he didn't want to just share it willy-nilly. I see. So Monsieur Fremenet is even more discreet than I had thought. Yeah. Hmm. As you are assisting him with the project, I believe it'll be beneficial for you to learn more about its vision and history. Oh god. But it would be quite impolite of me to simply pile all of my troubles on you without your permission. So, would you like to listen to my story? Not really. Sure, oh. you can tell us anything! You've already said nice things about us, so we'll try our best to help you get through your troubles. Okay. Ah, oh, what no. a lovely little fairy. Then let me think of a way to put my situation into words. Hmm. I'm sure you're already familiar with the tale of the water imps, right? Slightly. Simply put, parents came up with a story, painting water imps as scary abductors in an effort to convince their children to stay away from the water. My child is rather special, however. While most other children are terrified of Thelxi, he's infatuated with him. In... infatuated? With a water imp? What a brave soul. <laughs> it's fine, it's not yes. It's not the weirdest thing he we've seen someone infatuated with. The water imp might have just been misunderstood. True. In his mind, instead of singing to abduct children, the water imp actually sang out of a longing for companionship. 
As a result, he often goes near the water in secret. It's kind of funny. Asta commented on that uh, that image of me looking like an NPC chat, saying um, I look like an NPC that gives really obscure lore, and I said, the sky isn't fake, it's just misunderstood. Quite mysterious. Yeah. So he wanted to become friends with the water imp so it wouldn't be lonely any longer? What a unique way of thinking. Mm, that is pretty interesting. <laughs> Thank you, little Paimon. He indeed has always stood out from the crowd. Mm. He was actually diagnosed with loneliness syndrome when he was only eight years old. <laughs> is that a thing? Wait, is that is this an actual thing? Or is she just saying he had no friends as a kid? Loneliness syndrome? I've never heard of that. He's just like me. Genshin player syndrome. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a type of mental disorder. Those oh, affected God. by it often feel extremely lonely. Wait, it's an he actual interest in many mundane activities. Loneliness syndrome is a syndrome that a all syndrome Genshin is players have. What made him so determined to become friends with the water imp? Yeah, is she just saying depression? Could they just not say depression? Oh no! <laughs> is it a very serious disorder? Why did she say oh no? Oh no! Oh no! He depressed. <laughs> If you were to become afflicted with the disorder, Paimon, you would only be able to say less than a fraction of the words you're saying to the Traveler now. Mm -hmm. No! Paimon won't accept that! We would have to find a doctor to help cure Paimon! Paimon has a 2,000 word quota for daily conversations with the Traveler and she won't settle for a single word less! The family doctor has already begun to treat my son, but since the disorder is rare, there aren't many good regimens for treatment. He's also developed some new symptoms lately. Hmm. Such as uncontrollable delusions. That doesn't end well. It kills people. Rip Tepe. Um, I feel like 2,000 words really ain't that many. <laughs> it's got to be way more. Huh? Uncontrollable what now? Uncontrollable delusions. To put it simply, he can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Damn. And spends all his time in his fantasy world. Official? Then, then what is he seeing in his fantasy world? Pegasus, thank you for the beardies. It's a dream that he often mentioned to me when he was younger. I've compiled what I could understand of his recent rambling. It goes a bit like this. Uh, once upon a time, there was a splendid and magnificent underwater kingdom of water imps on the Salisha Plain, 500 feet beneath the surface. Countless lovely water imps lived in houses made of rainbow shells and corals, tending to sea animals during the day and singing between fields of golden tadaga during the night. Everyone led carefree and blessed lives until the day of the Iridescence Parade, the important festival during which the new king would be crowned. Before the festival, all water imps would select the most precious pearl they owned, wrap it in golden branches and leaves, and offer it to their most beloved prince. And during the day of the parade, the prince would cross a rainbow bridge made from all the offered shells and accept the crown from his father amid the applauds of his subjects. Finally, the new king would bless everyone with his well wishes. And as for the prince's name, it's none other than Thelxy. Amazing! Your son came up with all of this? He really crafted a lovely fairy tale world for Thelxy. It's like a beautiful dream. But perhaps no beautiful dream can ever last long. You see, the story ended with a twist. Uh-oh. The day of the Iridescence Parade came as expected, but countless monsters also arrived alongside the prince. The monsters were evil and cruel, and they struck fear into all the water imps' hearts. The water imps, adept at singing as they were, could not defend themselves against the monsters, so the kingdom fell. The king was killed, and the water imps were locked behind bars. The rainbow bridge lost its color and crumbled away. The prince was barely able to escape with the help of a mysterious masked individual, but he had already lost everything and could only spend his days singing mournful songs. I f for some reason, the water imps are making me think of Seelies, especially with like the singing and stuff, because didn't they sing and then the, the fallen kingdom and the king dying? Hmm. Dunno. And just as the prince sang out of loneliness, so could his song only be heard by similarly lonely children. How could the story end like this? Is that kind of fantasizing what caused your son to develop his loneliness syndrome? 
Mm. Well, it'd be more accurate to say that it was the syndrome that caused such terrible delusions to manifest. But in any case, the biggest problem is the patient eventually loses themselves to the fantasy world of their own creation. What do you mean? They get lost in My it so they can't come back. can no longer differentiate between imagination and reality. He's begun to see himself as Thelxi. Um, perhaps in his mind, the loneliness he felt became the same as that of a prince who lost everything he ever loved or stood for. What? So that's what you meant by uncontrollable delusions. Then we have to help him snap out of it. Mm. Alas, most of the time he acts as if he can no longer sense or interact with the real world at all. I've had several discussions with the doctor, and we think it is best to try to guide his fantasy. Oh god, guide his fantasy. He once wanted to make a picture book of his imaginary world, but since the disorder progressed too quickly, he never quite got past the first page of the book. If we could use this book as a breakthrough for his condition... Here, you can take a look. The ah, penguin. So Zuri's son also saw Thelxi as a penguin. Oh, he looks so sad. Can't even see his what face. What we should do now is help him complete this picture book. However, we'll lead the story to a different ending. One where the water imp prince is eventually able to restore his kingdom with the help of his friends. Okay. We'll need to chase away his loneliness and sorrow and let him perceive a world full of hope again. That's what I mean by guiding his fantasy. She wants to become Wait, the loom of fate. Need to finish the picture book. Why does Fremen need to make a Thelxi as well? To replace the other Thelxi. Because we need to treat the book story seriously, as if it's a history of things that have really happened. We'll need to go on a journey like Thelxi and help him regain his crown and country. But my child can no longer go on a journey of his own. This is why I commissioned Fremene here to craft a Thelxi. And then I'll paint the journey with this Thelxi into the picture book. Mm. Ah, like a stand-in for your son! Yeah, to replace I'm him. I'm starting to get it now. Oh, you really put a lot of thought into this, Zuria. Um, Paimon still has one question, though. Where will we be able to find a water imp kingdom? There are some ruins on the seabed of the Salacia Plains. I've already asked Fremene to research them for me. We'll be able to use one of the ruins as the kingdom. Oh, so we'll just need to act out a performance of, uh... Oh, <laughs> a brave journey through the kingdom of water imps. Mm -hmm. As long as we chase away the monsters in the ruins, it'll count as chasing away the monsters in the water imp kingdom, right? Sadly, no. We won't just be putting on a performance. It's just as Zuria said. We need to take this seriously. And the only way we can take this seriously is if we choose to believe everything that's happening is real. So, we'll be playing it straight, or, uh, making it a fully immersive experience? Oh, neither of those really sound right. Hmm. Uh, well, either way, we'll still be able to help, right? I'll try my best. It's all right. There's no need to get that serious. It's not a big deal. I believe in my son. We can just see this as him wanting to stay asleep for a bit longer. Aww. Because he's so enamored with his dream. Zuria. It's not how it's going to work, though, is it? Up, everyone. If we were to look troubled, my son is sure to become anxious as well. Hmm. I should be heading back right about now to check on my son. We temporarily moved to a place on the hill over there, so my son will have a better spot to convalesce. It's not far from the water, and there's also a great view. Feel free to come find me if anything urgent comes up. Understood. There's also one last thing. Since these two friends were able to help me out, I've made some more progress on Thelxi. I estimate that he should be ready sometime tomorrow. That's great news. I must thank you all. Hmm. With that in mind, how about we meet here in two days' time to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps? Sounds good to me. All right, everyone. Let's meet again in another two days. I'm See, down. Here is a brave and optimistic lady. Fremenay, do you think her plan will work out? Uh, 
I hope Let's so. Let's discuss that over by the tent. That is sound promising, there dude. There were a few things that I didn't bring up because the madame was here. Talk to Fremini. Oh, Jesus, dude. It's going... Why do I feel like it's going to be sad? Well, let's bring the fucking pets. <laughs> what is it, Fermine? Where'd they go? What did you want to say? <clears throat> um, if you don't mind me asking, I would like the two of you to mentally prepare yourselves. Uh, for what? <sighs> this is the first time that you've met anyone with the syndrome, right? I know you two are both really strong and will do everything you can to help the child. Mm -hmm. But with the syndrome being the way it is, if things don't... What, get better if quick? If things don't quite turn out as we wish, I hope you'll be able to accept the outcome and not put too much blame on yourselves. Fremine, why do you bring this up all of a sudden? Didn't we just promise Zuria that we'll be optimistic about everything working out? Yeah, to her face. It's not that I'm not optimistic. It's just... You know this illness really well? Ah, so that's why you looked like you knew exactly what she was talking about. Hmm. Wait, Fremine, don't tell Paimon that you also... No, no. Please don't misunderstand. I've never had it. I've just... I've just seen many cases of it at the House of the Hearth, back when we lived under the previous director. They say there are many factors surrounding the development of this illness. I've heard everything from hereditary factors and one state of mind, to environmental factors and even leyline disorder effects. Damn. Some even say it could be caused by contamination from god remains. And from the cases I've seen, there weren't many positive outcomes. In the worst cases, the patient could even... pass away. Holy shit. What? It could get that serious? And your Paimon thought they'd just stop talking as much. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's just the nature of it. So if you'll find it difficult to cope with the worst case scenario, I would prefer that you back out right now. I don't want you to help only to feel like you failed. Don't worry, I've seen all kinds of things, all kinds of strange and difficult things in life. Yeah, that's right. Paimon's seen all of those things too. No matter how hard it might get, we won't be scared. Really? <sighs> then in that case, let's see this real life fantasy adventure together to the end. Paimon has a question. If this illness can really be as bad as you've described, then do you really think Zuria's method will be able to help? After all, we'll just be using a toy as Delxi and some ruins as the Kingdom of Water Imps. The whole adventure will only be turned into a picture book for her son to read. Hmm. Well, I think it should be able to do something. To harbor a fantasy means that the child wants to save himself somehow. The only reason he's allowed his dream kingdom to fall is because he's lost control of his heart. But if we can help him regain control and escape from the darkness, we'll be able to change his world. Like helping someone who's lost their voice be able to speak again. Interesting. Oh, Paimon sees what you're saying now. Huh. How do you understand all of this so well, Fremine? Hmm. Well, maybe because I have also had many of my own dreams in the past. I even had my own fairy tale world, much like that boy's. I was able to draw a lot of support from it. So I believe in the power of fantasy worlds. Was the penguin town you meet? Oh. Ah, so. Oh, 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 that's so cute. What penguin town? <laughs> Is that also a fairy tale world? Don't leave Paimon in the dark! Suddenly, Fermine pulls out a living. A, a dive. A living helmet? A diving helmet and puts it on his head. Hey, why did you put that on? He's going diving. 
It's just one of my personal quirks. Please pay it no mind. Anyway, Penguin Town is a peaceful place with lots of penguin residents. They're all really good at making clockwork toys. Does he put the helmet on when he starts to feel like anxious or embarrassed? And Pear is the town's triumphant hero, as well as the one who quietly protects the whole place. Wait, that's so fucking cute. Pear? But didn't you make Pear yourself? Well, I often think that Pear only came to me because he realized how much I needed him. So it's not so much that I made Pear, as Pear chose me as his friend. Mm. Uh, Fremine, are you sure you're not losing control of your fantasies as well? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I can still differentiate between fantasy and reality. I just believe that the fairy tale world of my dreams must also exist somewhere. It might just be hidden, which is why it's difficult to see. Or it will only reveal itself at very specific times. Specific times? Like mm. when you put on your diving helmet? Yeah. That's the general idea of it. Really? Pyro just said that because you put on your helmet. Oh my god, Pyro. Have you ever observed the surface world from underwater? Kinda. It's as if you're viewing a whole different world from the outside. It's a very surreal feeling. Both alienating, but also as if you're being protected by something. I have a similar feeling when I put on my diving helmet. In those moments, it's possible to see some truly wondrous things. As if a fairy tale has become reality. It's almost like a sort of miracle. Hmm. Really? Like a miracle? Now I want to try on your helmet too. <laughs> well, if that's an order. I've. Yeah, it's an order. Hey, now's not the time. Remini still has Delcy's weapon to make. We don't want to bother him now. Yes, we do. Right. I still have to collect some tools on these. Stop to crack speaking the for me, Paimon. I've got to finish everything before tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me, Paimon. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for you to try my helmet. Thanks. I do hope that when we get the Natlan Orkon quest that us and Paimon get split up and that foreshadowing that's been happening for the past three years actually does come true. We get split up during it and we speak for the majority of the quest. Thanks for all of your help. I'll be off for now. Let's meet up here again in two days. Hmm. You'll hate that? Why? Ah, wait, this is a nice, uh, nice event, dude. Shit. Oh, what the hell? That's the fucking artwork for the event screen? Three days later. Just in case this does end up going on YouTube, the time between part one and now, I got very sick, YouTube. So, what the hell? Solomenaline. Oh, Madison, with Desiree on it. Oh, oh, Destry. Is it Desiree? Destry? Is your child feeling any better? Hopefully. Thank you for your concern, Fremine. His condition is fairly stable. The family doctor said we might be able to take him out for a stroll today. Oh. Here we are, Fremine, we're here! Wait, that's cute. That's very cute. <laughs> Seems like everyone's arrived now. Yes, the whole family's here. Not quite. Aren't we missing someone? But Paimon has a guess where he might be. Delxy? Or the child? Hey, Delxy! <laughs> of course it's Delxy, dude. <laughs> Bro, what? That's the cutest fucking thing I've seen in my life. I don't know what you just said, but I'll figure it out later. Oh, Delxy's got himself a sword and a shield now. He's looking sharp. Indeed. With his weapons in hand, Delxy looks more formidable than ever. You've really outdone yourself, Remine. Yo, Hoyavis, can we get those weapon skins for Candice, please? Yeah, <laughs> With a beach skin? Yes, you really had a good eye for materials. Everything you found was high quality. True. Speaking of which, 
Zuria just told me that she wants to end the adventure with the coronation ceremony. So, uh, could I also trouble you with finding some materials for the crown? That's what we're best at, Fremmy. You can just keep an eye out for them on our way to the ruins. I was planning to collect the materials myself, but then I realized you might be able to find some prettier ones than what I could get my hands on. Maybe. We do have a good eye for pretty. I mean, look at there. Consider it done. It seems like everything's ready to go. Shall we head out? Please wait a moment. Oh. I was just thinking. Since Thalxi has already shown us his brand new appearance, we may already be able to draw a new page in the picture book. What do you think? Yeah. Ooh, Paimon's excited now. What should we draw on the page? Hmm. Why don't we use the story we know as a reference? Just make the atmosphere a bit less grim. That works. So we'll take out the sad parts and replace them with happier stuff? Sounds great to Paimon! Alright, I'll give it a try. I'm not very adept at drawing, but I've seen a lot of art during my work. You're better than me. Now, as far as the actual content of the drawing, please tell me what you'd like to see. Let me <laughs> think. Sword and shield. We can draw the weapon. The prince has picked up the Sword of Courage and the Shield of Perseverance, mm -hmm. which proves he has crossed the mire of doubt and now is ready to wage war against the darkness. Okay, I'll add the weapons. Nice. Oh, that's so cute. To give him some friends. Thuxi's got some friends by his side now, so he's no longer fighting alone. Okay, I'll also draw some companions. Oh, that's Anything also else? cute. Yo, look at the rainbow-looking outlines, dude. Don't forget to add some color. Color. Ah, oh, color, yes. That's really important. The road in front of him now will no longer be just grayscale, but bursting with color and hope. Also, yeah, this motherfucker said I'm not very adept at drawing. Shut the fu- What are you- Okay, I'll bait it off. the page could have become so inspiring? How wonderful. Splendid ideas, everyone. Great! Everyone looks super pumped up. Hell yeah. Everything, most of all. Are you seeing this, my son? Are you feeling inspired by this as well? Oh, wait. What, what is Thelxy saying here, chat? I'm sure he is, Zuria. And this is still just the first page. Aww. That's right! Paimon can't wait to see the picture book when it's all finished! We should finish it as soon as possible and keep up the belief and hope in our hearts. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to look forward to it as well. So let's get the show on the road and head towards the Kingdom of Water Imps. Wait, he said, I love you, Mom? That's so fucking cute. What? Yay! Thalxy's fantastic adventures begin now! That's so cute, dude. I like this little mechanical penguin. He said it in French. Yeah. After some time, you arrive at the shore above the underwater kingdom of water imps. Wait. Strike a pose. Time to run. Oh. No. Damn, you're the fucking ruthless. Calm down. Look, those are materials that we can use for the crown, right? Yeah, Let's Pavel. Get some for if you stop fucking my camera angles up. What? Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of his book. Nothing of his bones that do fade. What? These should be enough. I Wait. knew you'd have a knack for finding the best materials. I said that's number two. You shouldn't need anything else to head to the kingdom of water imps. Where the hell's the... Where the hell's number one? Interesting. Oh, ah. Is that the entrance to the underwater ruins ahead? Well, it sure looks like it, doesn't it? I told you number one, remember? No, I don't remember. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what is this? I, bro, I don't f just... <laughs> I don't know what this team is, but it's a team. I, I, I just, I, I just picked. Fuck it. Oh no. It's where you've been getting back to the first part of the event. Oh. So these are the underwater ruins that Fremini found. They're pretty amazing, but still not exactly the kind that Paimon was imagining. This is the kingdom of water imps, Paimon, not ruins. Oh, yeah. Paimon knows. It's just... <sighs> Paimon thought we'd actually see a fairy tale world. Like with the water imps' colorful houses. No. And the rainbow bridge. 
I'm sorry. No. I was hoping to put up some decorations, <laughs> but ran out of time to do it by myself. It's okay. It's fantasy time now. Whoa, someone's already switched into fantasy mode. Yup. Seems like the travelers already got the gist of things. You should do your best too, Paimon. Uh, don't underestimate Paimon. Paimon can flip the switch too. So do it. Barbecue sauce on my kidneys. Hi, friends. Wow. Paimon, you really went full Goku there, didn't you? Boost, thank you for the 21 months. How you doing? Young adventurers, tis Paimon, guardian goddess of this land. State your goals and intentions for visiting this nation. That wasn't your part. Uh, or your role. We are the companions of uh, Prince Thalxi, your divine highness. Oh. We have come to help him reclaim the glory that he has lost. Oh, reclaiming your glory? Thy goddess here has golden glory, silver glory, and bronze glory. Which is it that the prince has lost? What is her huh? voice? <sighs> Did you break character, Paimon? Not at all! This is the goddess's test! <clears throat> From your responses, <laughs> the goddess has concluded that you're all brave adventurers without the taint of greed in your hearts. As such, you are worthy of everyone's respect. So please accept the goddess's reward. The goddess will now bestow all three types of glory upon you. Ah. And as for this prince, the goddess will also bestow upon you the rainbow glory. So your future will always be filled with light. Uh, wait. Thelsi's questioning something. He's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> gratitude to your divine highness for such generous blessings. Power is now surging through every part of my body. Uh, me. <sighs> me too. <laughs> is this the divine inspiration of legend? All thanks to the power of goddess Paimon. <laughs> <clears throat> now adventurers. Forge bravely ahead and defeat the monsters that have taken over the kingdom. You will be sure to find that which you seek. Huh. Oh shit. Use Prince Thelsi's Water Imp Chancer to defeat opponents more easily after using this skill. Thelsi must charge up before being able to use it again. Please be careful, brave adventurers. Just ahead. That was terrible. I mean. That's fine. Uh, From an eighth up. Nice. Wait, best ability in the game? You asked for it. We're under attack again. You know. It's a law which rolled the deep. There's no need to Kinda. fear, my friends. His highness is so strong now that even a divinature of the deep would pose no threat to him. Surely. Uh. <laughs> it's finally over. So have we defeated the evil monsters and reclaimed the kingdom of water imps? Yes. Yes. It should now be time for us to attend Thuxi's coronation ceremony. The only thing is, I didn't expect this to go so smoothly. I thought it would have taken longer for us to reach the heart of the ruins. No, nope, we're quick. My mistake. I should have told Fremenay earlier that we would also need a crown. Mm. It's all because the traveler and goddess Paimon were too strong. We just eradicated all the monsters in one go. It's okay, Zuria. We can come back again once I've made the crown. True. And I must thank all of you again for taking the time. And you too, Thalxi, my child. Beep, 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 beep. Thalxi's turning out to be a real expert at fighting. He is kind of a chad. I don't think there's anything that will be able to stop him. He's like a true prince now. Yes, Aww. I agree as well. Let's head back to camp for now. I asked the traveler to search for some materials on the way because I want to make the crown as soon as possible. We can add an update to Thelxi's fantastic adventures as well. Now that we've reclaimed the kingdom of water imps, it's time for us to draw some new scenes in the picture book. Hell yeah, it is. And add some more color. I want us to get colored in. Instead of being just the drawings, that'd be cool. Viv, welcome in. Ryder Shogun versus Thelxi, who wins? Thelxi. How you doing, Viv? 
You just want to see someone draw God as Pipot. <laughs> You kind of did. <laughs> no problem. I'm happy to oblige. Then in that case, the story today should go something like this. Once upon a time. After overcoming many obstacles, Prince Selksy and his brave companions finally arrived at the entrance to the kingdom of water imps. Get fucked. Paimon's not even there, dude. At this time, the little fairy in the group, oh. Paimon, revealed her true goddess form to her companions. <laughs> ah! Suspicious. The goddess has arrived. She praised the companions for their purity, and to reward them, she bestowed upon them many blessings, and even prayed that the prince would be able to fulfill his goal. Suspicious. Bathed under the goddess's glory, the prince and his companions charged into the bastion of evil, chased away the monsters, and rescued the pretty water imps from their imprisonment. The prince finally managed to reclaim his kingdom. But as for the crown... Oh, God. Oh, no. The crown isn't ready yet. No. The crown was within the prince's reach, but the monsters took it with them as they fled. They haven't given up and are sure to return, but the prince is certain to reclaim the crown the next time they fight. The brilliant rainbow shall descend onto the kingdom once more. Yes, it will. Oh, and Paimon can almost see it all happening now. Whoa, the pages are beautiful. Surya is really talented at drawing. Thank you, everyone. We've yeah, she said she wasn't. The she lied. Page of the picture book now. Thelxie's journey is one step closer to its end. Nice. And the promised coronation. My child, you'll also be able to brighten up when that time comes, right? Aww, does it say I love you, Mum, again, or is this different? I'm sure he will, Zuria. Who knows? Perhaps the doctor will already have some good news for you when you get back home today. I sure hope so, your divine highness. Again? Oh, Fremine, about the time you'll need for the crown. Please don't worry. One day should be more than enough. <laughs> yeah. Ah, then I must thank you for your hard work. All right, let's rendezvous here in another two days' time for our final adventure. Okay? Sounds good to me. And see you in two days, my lovely friends. Oh my god, Viv. Oh. Aww. Cute. All right. It's about time we start heading off, too. You've still got some work to do, right, Fremine? Yeah. I will need to go to the city shortly to get some parts for the base of the crown. I want to try out a few different designs and choose the one that looks the best. Everyone is really dedicated. Yeah, Paimon knew that you didn't <coughs> often take commissions from others, but Paimon had no idea you'd be so dedicated once you're on the job. Right? Ah, uh, well, about that, it might be because... Because what? what? Maybe if you let him fucking talk for a second, he'd tell you. It's because I hope. Uh, what's the matter? And what's with that look on your face? You're turning red. And it looks like you're about to run away and put your helmet on again. Haha, <laughs> funny. Just let him finish his fucking sentence. <laughs> uh, am I turning red? Don't tease him, Paimon. <laughs> all right, all right. We won't fight. For today, Fremine. Let's see each other in two days' time. I okay. Thank you. See you in two days. I guess I guess we just won't. Okay. I interesting. I feel like if Paimon hadn't have interrupted there, we would have <laughs> known. I hope that everyone who's found <laughs> themselves in a dark place. Aww. Would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. Oh, that's cute. That's so cute. Oh, it's not Paimon's fault. He's just shy. It's not Paimon's fault. She's interrupted him all the time. No, that's true. That's true. Remy is your fave of the trio, low key. I think it'd be my fave too. I like all of them though. <laughs> Translators chat. <coughs> oh, never mind. Hey, Fremine, <coughs> Thelxie, we're here. 
It's both of them. Hello, Paimon. Hello, traveler. Hi. Hello, Thelx Thelxy. Yes, we're just waiting for Zuria now. She hasn't arrived yet. Then let's wait for her a little while. Or actually, maybe we can go find her. True. It's not too far from here anyway. Didn't she say she just lives on the hill over there? That's a beautiful house. Hey, beautiful traveler. view. Hi, Mon. Hi. Oh, it's Found you, Delaroche. Last. Uh, I'm so glad that you both are all right. Huh? Why are you here, Miss Delaroche? And what could have happened to us? What could have happened? That water imp Thelxie, of course. After I gave you that commission the other day, I began to get worried and went asking about the boy that went missing. Okay. Oh, that? We've got it all figured out now. The boy you heard about was just fine. <laughs> Even the missing fish was his fault. Don't yeah. worry, we'll help you get the fish back as soon as we're done with this job. We figured it all out. Sorry about that. I've been diving in the area recently. Huh? What, Fremenay diving? No, no, no. That's not what happened at all. What? I've heard a completely different account. Huh? What I was told is that about a month ago, a child tied a bunch of heavy seashells onto his body and walked into this open stretch of water. He never came back. What could that be if not that water imp's work? What the f- uh, are, are... Are you sure? Who's cosplaying? 100% sure. I've confirmed the account with several veteran fishermen I know. The child was only eight years old. His name was Lesko. Lesko Destray. Wait. Oh. Lesko Destray? Yeah, that's the name. They say the family took on the name after moving to the city from a place called Stray. Anyway, his mother is a pretty famous art dealer, while his father passed away from an accident many years ago. Oh, well, naturally, his mother was devastated by the incident and fell terribly ill. Oh. It's said that she left the court of Fontaine, and no one knows where she's gone. It... it, it can't be, right? Lesko Destre? Zuria Destre? <sighs> it, it, it must be some sort of a coincidence? Seems like we need to pay a visit to the Destre house. I'm sorry, miss. We've got to go check on something right now. Uh, oh, I see. God. Well, we'll go on ahead. I just came to make sure that you're both all right. I'll head back then. Uh, please remember to take care. Ah, oh, that's fucking messed up, dude. That's messed up. I didn't see that coming. This music's so cheerful, too. Stop. <laughs> Who are you? I have a patient here who needs quiet bed rest. Oh. Please leave us be unless you have anything urgent to report. Who's the patient? The door opens after a brief moment of silence. The man walks out with a confused this look at his eyes. This is the residence eyes. of Zuria Destree, and I am Jala Khan, her family doctor. What did you mean by your question just now? Who else could be my patient? Your patient should be Zuria's son, right? She told us herself that her son had contracted loneliness syndrome. Uh... No, you're right. Young Master Lesko did have that illness once upon a time, but he's... Well, the young master's no longer with us. And now the madame has come down with the same illness. Are you her friends by any chance? Yeah... Dude, someone's five head from chat because I remember on day one of this event when it just came out, someone was like, what if it's all a lie and it's actually the mum that has the loneliness syndrome? And I was like, that'd be a cool fucking twist. But I didn't expect the kid to be deadged. You informed the doctor of all that's happened. Oh, so when she had requested time to go out over the past few days, it was so she could spend them with you. So, if I'm understanding this right, the one who's suffering from uncontrollable delusions is the madame herself? Oh. She believes her son is still alive? She thinks Thelxie is her son, doesn't she? That is correct. When the young master disappeared, <sighs> she was organizing an art exhibit that she had specifically prepared for him. 
But since she had to leave the house, she was unable to see her son one last time. Mm. That might have been the trigger for her regret. Or perhaps the family's fall into loneliness and grief was inevitable as soon as the old master passed away. First the son, and then the mother. But how could that be? She really looked like she had a handle on everything. Her smile was so lovely, and she even told us to stay optimistic. But you're saying she... Those actions are proof that she can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Oh, man. Then, all the other things that she told us about her son, were those fake too? No, those were all real. Although, they were all things that happened before the young master left us for good. Madame's time has just never moved forward since his passing. I see. So after her son left, she created a fantasy world where her son was still with her. She was looking for a way to cure his illness when she ran into us. So how is Zuria now? She has been in a good mood the past few days, <coughs> even humming a song when she returned from her stroll. She even began discussing with me the idea of using deliberate guidance to ease the illness. It was all going well until last night. What happened last she night? She spent a whole night staring at the shell the young master left behind and the words that he had inscribed onto it. I was going to say that. Then she broke down once more. I prescribed some sedatives and she's currently resting. I was gonna say that, dude. I was literally gonna say is the inscribed shell that was on the sea floor like one that was strapped to him. But but then what should we do? How can we help her? There has to be something we can do. Oh. Even though this is a devastating piece of news, we must all calm down first. What should we do? I need to think. I need to remember the old house of the hearth and the children who lived in it. Those patients and what their doctors said back then. Hmm. Ah, what if? Go on. Dr. Jalakon, have you seen a picture book? The Madame should have brought it back with her. Hmm. Are you thinking about trying the guidance therapy she talked to me about before? Well, it's worth a shot. I'll go get the book. It might be. The doctor quickly retrieves the book and hands it to Fremene. Yes, this is it. We still need to finish the adventure at the picture book? That's right. If what Dr. Jalacon said was true, the past few days have been very helpful to Zuria. So we should complete this journey. We need to show her that her child has found a happy ending in the world of her dreams. But... but wouldn't that just make it harder for her to accept reality? Or move on. One must first face reality before accepting it. The Madame has been crushed by her feelings of grief and... Uh. can no longer bring herself to face reality. Our first priority would be to get her out of this state. Right. Before today, I had thought she wanted to use Thelxi's fantastic adventures to save her son. But now, I think she might need it to save herself. Yeah. And if we could complete it, we should be able to give her some feeling of inspiration and closure. Maybe those feelings would be enough to give her some courage to face reality again. We'll have to give it a try. There's no time to waste. Let's set off right away. Ah, oh, this event fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm kidding. It doesn't suck, but goddamn, dude. It's so messed up. It's so messed up. Nation of Hydro, indeed. Nation of Tears. It really is. We're Man. This, this is, is the sad. Part of Thelxie's journey, but the most important person is missing. Hi, Thelxie. You're the child, aren't Everyone. you? Everyone. Please don't be so down and gloomy. Remember what she told us? If we were to feel troubled, the patient would become anxious as well. Oh, I can't help it. <sighs> You're right. <coughs> Who needs to smile? If we had to give something to Zuria, it should be our smiles. We have to keep smiling as we finish this adventure. 
I couldn't I smile through the pain. Right, everyone? I'm sure she will. She yeah. better fucking recover by the end. I'm sure she will. Ay ay ay. I murdered her. What the fuck, Kelsey? Oh god. Watch out, everyone. Not what I wanted. True. Belts, you do be fucking popping off, dude. It before the voice line finished. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I made a promise to my friends and I'm already very late. Oh, God. But, Madame, you're still. St Don't try to stop me. Today's the most important day for treating Thelpsy. We'll use the guidance method. Didn't you also say that you'd think it'd work? I'm not trying to stop you, Madame. It's just. Could you tell me the name of your child? She just said. Dr. Jalakan, how can you forget the Thelxy. name of your own patient? His name is Thelxy. He's the prince of the kingdom of water imps. We will go today to reclaim his crown and attend his coronation ceremony. I see. Madame, please rest assured. Everything is still on schedule. Your friends have already departed to find... Wait. Look, good doctor. They've already returned. Zuria, Zuria, we've retrieved the crown. Paimon, <sighs> huh, everyone, have you really? Yeah. Yes, but the coronation ceremony still hasn't taken place because we felt like you should be the one to preside over it. Wonderful, how wonderful! Thelxy, my child, my child, are you hearing this? Everything you lost will now come back to you, and soon, very soon, you will never be lonely again. Does that say, I love you, mom, again? <sighs> and the last page of the picture book. It's still waiting for you to illustrate in color. Right. The picture book. The picture book. But I don't know what I should put on the last page. Don't worry, Thelxie and his friends all know what she got on it. Get ready, Zuria. We'll describe everything for you. You should do one of the old S's that we used to do back in school. You do three lines, then three lines below, and then you join the top far out lines, and then you diagonally cross the bottom ones, and then join them together, and it looks like a Superman S. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At last, Thelxie and his friends were able to drive off the fire invading monsters and achieve a dashing victory their success was complete and the recovered crown resplendent nice the water imps finally returning to their homes showered the prince with love and applause as he greeted them they once again offered their precious shells to the prince and reconstructed the rainbow bridge of old as he watched the scene unfold the prince could not help but be touched by its beauty. Moved by everyone's happiness, the Aww. prince stepped onto the rainbow bridge and took a good look at all the <coughs> friends who had gone on the journey with him. There stood the traveler, goddess Paimon, Fremine, and... Huh? Where's the last person? The prince looked frantically around, but could not find the person he wanted to see most. At that moment, the person suddenly appeared on the other side of the bridge. She walked towards him with a smile and slowly lifted her veil. The prince could not hold back his tears. He recognized then that the mysterious person that had been by his side the whole time was none other than his mother. Surya walked across the bridge and placed the crown above the prince's head. She smiled down upon him as she said, My prince, my king, you shall never, ever need to feel lonely again. Bro, Fremine saying this too? Ugh. That's the end of the story, <coughs> Thank you. Thank you all. 
I am so sorry, my child. Maman should have spent more time with you. Did you hear the story? You'll never have to feel lonely again. I wish I didn't know what that said now. <laughs> Mama loves you too. Uh, Fuck. What's happening? Is Zuria talking to Thelxy? What is Thelxy saying? Quick, put on my diving helmet. There's a transcription module in it that's compatible with Thelxy's output signals. You should be able to use it to understand what Thelxy's saying. Already know, and I could have gathered it from when she said, Mama loves you too. Fremenade walks up to you, pulls out his diving helmet before placing it on your head. Wait, sick. Can we keep it? So that's what Thelxy's saying. Mama. Mama loves you too. <sighs> but I love you more, Mama. Oh no. What is this? What? Did you see something? Mama, I'm getting a little sleepy. If it's time for bed, can you hum a lullaby to me again? Of course, my dearest child. As long as you want to hear it, Mama will always hum for you. That makes Thank a lot you, more sense. Your lullaby has always been my favorite. Now that I've heard it, I can return to my dream and to the kingdom of water imps in peace. <sighs> my poor darling. Please don't forget. I will always love you. My love is greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. I won't forget, Mamon. And so is my love for you. Greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. Oh. Mamon. How are we seeing this through the helmet? Oh. Fuck you, Hoyovus. Three days later at Fremenay's camp. Traveler, Paimon, you're here. Fremenay, why did you call us in such a hurry? Did you hear something from Zuria? Oh, if it's not good news, Paimon doesn't want to hear it. Call me, tell Don't me worry. about it. It's definitely great news. The Madame came here for a visit just now with her doctor. Color has returned to her cheeks, and she sounded full of energy as well. She said she'd like to return to the court to continue hosting the art exhibit. But this time, she'll work with her doctor to exhibit some picture books related to the illness. I'd like to be happy that she's feeling better, but I feel like she's just passed it on to fucking me, dude. Of course. Thelxy's fantastic adventures and the guidance therapy will be included in the exhibit as well. She'd like to use her experience to help others. That's wonderful! <sighs> so it wasn't bad news after all. Mm-hmm. Here, please take this picture book with you. Uh... The Madame wanted you to have it. If at some point in the future, you were to run into someone with similar troubles, she hopes the book would be of use to you. Uh, but this is her son's story, right? Said quick guys prime sub to brand to cure his loneliness syndrome. True, dude. Don't worry, it's just a copy. <laughs> she still has the original. It's extremely important to her. All right, then there's no problem. <sighs> Chat, this is so sad. <laughs> something important. 
Paimon definitely didn't expect the fantasy adventure to be so useful. Paimon was a little worried about how everything would turn out. After all, fantasy is just fantasy. True. Paimon, do you know what the madame said? Well, it doesn't have to be she just said, fantasy, actually. I had the moment when she placed the crown on Thelxie's head. She felt like she really saw something beautiful. Her child had returned, and he told her that he loved her. This is fucked up. A Juni thing for the prime self for three months. Thank you, thank you. She also said that was when she was finally able to bid farewell to her son. She felt like at that moment, she was healed by some mystical power, mm. and she was filled with courage from head to toe. Oh, really? But could that just be another part of her fantasy? Perhaps. But if fantasy is just fantasy, and the fantasy world is not real, then how could it still grant us these powers that we can continue to use in the real world? So perhaps fantasy is not just fantasy after all. I mean, we kind of know that already, kind of. Like, even in the grand scheme of things from the end of the Sumeria War Conquest. A descent of the fairy tale world into the real world. At that time, the wondrous fairy tale temporarily became reality and influenced real things in our world. That has to be what happened. You saw it too, didn't you? But that can't be what happened, right? There's just no way. Wouldn't it be like a miracle if that really happened? Yes, I suppose that would be a miracle. I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. He said it. He said the thing out loud to us. I hate this event. Did you notice the difference in the event banner after... Well, no, I just finished it. <laughs> oh. Man. Oh, kid. That was basically Fremmy's fucking story quest, dude.